Emerald Ranch, a large and prosperous cattle ranch in the central heartlands, state of New Hanover. A stone's throw away from the town of Valentine and just south of the Grizzlies East, this thriving workplace is one of the biggest of its kind. In the past, it was once considered to not only be a ranch, but a small town, homing both a general store, a saloon, and even its own train station, much resembling what the McFarlane's ranch would become some years later. A place where people will come from miles around just to find work within this busy community. But behind the cattle, the ranch hands, and its seeming success, something feels a little off within this place. You're listening to Phil of Philby Gaming, and here is today's video. Red Dead Redemption 2 – The Truth of Emerald Ranch Emerald Ranch is owned by one Eugene Wagner, a powerful man with a determination on his mind to be not only the most successful ranch around, but the only one. A reputation to be a ruthless boss, he rules his ranch with an iron fist. His workers are in constant fear of him. From an outside perspective, he appears to visitors as friendly and approachable, as shown here. Howdy, mister. If you can't treat people with respect, what's the point, I say? Is that so? Well, nice to meet you. Goodbye. But let's see what happens if you follow him up to the main house, where both he and his family reside. Hey, the hell do you want here? Fine, let's go! Uh, uh, How about this? So why the sudden change in character? What makes him so paranoid and protective about his property? Let's look a little deeper into this. If you take a look around the ranch house, you will come to notice that all of the windows have their curtains drawn and every door to the place is either blocked off or just locked up in general. What is he hiding? Why doesn't the ranch owner want people to see the ongoings inside of his home? Is he really just that private? This was my first assumption, until one time, when out on my travels, I ran across a lady who was in need of dire assistance. She asks of us to return her home. At first, it's just a friendly talk, as she tells of her horse and her family life. But soon enough, the conversation takes a somewhat odd turn, as the lady begins to talk about her current residence and place of work, Emerald Ranch. Hired to tend the gardens, she almost seems adamant on moving on as quickly as possible stating that Emerald Ranch is a strange place. She goes on to explain how the owner, Mr. Eugene Wagner, is a mean bastard who delights in bullying folk. This is something we already knew as it was well-known information among the community, but then the lady begins to speak of something else, the owner's daughter. Emerald Ranch, well, it's a strange place. How so? The owner's a mean bastard. Strange, too. Delights in bullying folk. There's a daughter, but she never leaves the house. You can see her in the window sometimes. When I asked about her, everybody told me to leave it alone. She continues to tell us a little more about the ranch, primarily the closed-down saloon. Found an old saloon there, all shut down now, but I went in to have a look, and there's bullet holes, old blood stains. Something definitely happened there, but I couldn't figure it. Just an uncomfortable feeling to the place. Either way, it's time I left. Especially now I lost that poor horse. As shown, when the lady would ask the other workers questions about the oddities of the place, she would be told quickly to immediately forget her interest. So now I was intrigued. I wanted to know exactly what was going on here. After dropping our passenger off safely, I decided to do a little more investigating. We had already seen what we could of the house, but as the lady stated, sometimes the ranch owner's daughter could be seen staring out of the window, so I planned to return to this. But for now, I wanted to investigate the saloon. Heading to the north side of the area, I was at the saloon, and much to my delight, it was still accessible. Upon entering, the first thing I noticed was a dusty and abandoned atmosphere. It had been some time since anyone was here. With some closer inspection, the scene became a little more unsettling. Broken bottles were all over the place. Bloodstained handprints and splatters were all across the floor, indicating that someone had been hurt and it looked like they were trying to crawl away. But most importantly, there were several bullet holes on the wall, right above the bloodstains. Something had definitely gone on here. I couldn't find much else inside. There were three doors, 
two of which were the entrance and exit, and a third was locked up, so I decided to take my investigation back outside. Turning to my right, facing toward the train station, I found the Emerald Ranch Cemetery. Investigating each grave, I found nothing out of the ordinary. That was until I had found a separate grave located elsewhere. This one, suspiciously, right next to the saloon. It read the following. Joshua Burgess, accidentally shot, August 1898. A little digging into Rockstar's wiki page informed me that Joshua Burgess was a ranch hand at Emerald. So with the obvious placement and text on the gravestone, this led me back into the saloon. But I wondered why the headstone was separated from the rest of the cemetery. More on that shortly. As stated upon the grave of Joshua, he was accidentally shot. But how do you accidentally shoot someone a total of three times? Things just didn't add up. I went back to the house and noticed that every time I approached, I could hear arguing coming from inside. It seemed the lady was giving someone hell over not performing their chores. Although I couldn't fully make out what they were saying, I picked up a little. Something about plucking a chicken and a threat of no supper. So who was doing the shouting and who was being yelled at? I believe the unseen daughter may have been a victim of this vocal exchange. After a great deal of waiting, I finally caught a glimpse of Eugene's daughter, standing in the upstairs window, just staring out onto her father's ranch, just as the lady we assisted had stated. But what troubled this girl so much and why was she locked away like this? Although I tried my hardest to find out what had happened, it seemed I'd hit a wall. I was absolutely stumped as to what was going on at Emerald Ranch. Why was the daughter locked away and what exactly happened to Joshua Burgess? Were these two incidents somehow connected to one another? Or was this the story of an overprotective father fearing for the safety of his child after the ranch suffered the shooting? I had just about given up on the entire thing, that is, until I stumbled across something when I was travelling south from Fort Wallace. On the side of the road, abandoned, was a mail cart. The strange thing about this though, was that all the mail was still inside, and the carting horse was gone too. The only thing that looked somewhat suspicious was a broken wheel on the wagon. But this didn't look like bandits had attacked, as there were no signs of foul play. I didn't really think anything of it, that was until I began to have a peek through some of the letters. It was here that I found one from a lady named Annabelle, and is addressed to one Miriam Wagner. The contents of this letter finally may give us the answers to exactly what happened at Emerald Ranch. It reads the following. My dearest Miriam, I decided that I would write to you again because even though our world seems so far apart these days, I think of you often. New York is crowded and dirty, but so alive. It feels like anything is possible, even for a country girl like me and my biggest news is that I have been cast in a Henrik Ibsen play. It's a small role, but now I can finally call myself a Broadway actress. Sometimes I do miss home though, the peace and the clean air, being able to take a ride at first light. I received a letter from Lily Millet a while back, and it appears that she is experiencing some financial difficulties. She was always very sensible with money, so I am worried that that weasel Cooper has his claws in here again. She also mentions that she has not seen you leave the house in months. I cannot even begin to imagine how painful it must have been for you to lose Joshua in such a horrible way, and I would never assume to instruct you how to grieve, but I worry about you existing in such isolation. This must be the sixth letter I have sent to you with no response. Please let me know that you are alright, even if it is just the shortest of notes to tell me to mind my own business. You can tell me anything. Your loving cousin, Annabelle. P.S. Uncle Eugene, with the greatest of respect, if you are withholding my mail from Miriam, or dare I say, constraining her in any other way, I beg you to reconsider your actions. I know how much you love her, but please do not confuse love with possession. She is a beautiful, intelligent woman with so much life ahead of her. The first thing I want to point out in this letter is the mention of both Lily Millet and her partner, Cooper. This firstly indicates that the mail was intended to be sent to Emerald Ranch, as I had met these two characters previously as a debt collection for Leopold Strauss. Secondly is the mention of Joshua, 
and how Annabelle expresses how she cannot imagine what it was like for Miriam to lose Joshua in such a horrible way. She goes on to tell how this is the sixth letter that she has sent, all with no response, and begs Miriam just to let her know that she's safe and well, believing that her cousin is suffering heavily from grief. But then the letter takes a dark turn. Annabelle always believes that it's a possibility that Uncle Eugene may be withholding the mail, or that he may be constraining Miriam in some other way. Annabelle begs her uncle not to confuse the love of his daughter with possessiveness. All of the above confirms that Miriam is the daughter whom Eugene has kept locked away for all these months, and that he has a history of doing such things. So here is my theory as to what happened. Joshua Burgess, the ranch hand, and Miriam Wagner, daughter of Eugene, owner of Emerald Ranch, had fallen in love. Eugene, with a history of possessive ways, didn't take too kindly to this, and led Joshua to the saloon one night, more than likely under false pretenses. Maybe he led him to believe that he would be giving his blessing. The father and the ranch aunt got into a brawl, which would explain all of the broken glass everywhere. Eugene Wagner then shot Joshua Burgess in a fit of rage. When realizing he was still alive and trying to escape this horrific scene, indicated by the bloody handprints, Eugene fired a further two rounds at Joshua, finally killing him. I believe that Joshua's body was buried separate to the cemetery as Eugene no longer considered him to be part of the Emerald Ranch community, past or present, in any way, shape or form. And of course, he covered up the killing as an accident to avoid sentencing. As for Miriam, I think Eugene is keeping her locked away as he is both overly protective and obsessive towards his daughter, as shown earlier when I tried to approach the house. So what do you guys believe happened? Do you agree with this theory? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, if you enjoyed today's video, hit like and subscribe, and turn on notifications too, to be the first alerted when new content is produced. You guys want to get in touch? You can find me over on Instagram at PhilbyGaming. Links to all my other social medias are in the video description. You've been listening to Phil, and I'll see you in the next one.